and here they come. Here we go. Loading into the capsule. And the significance here of the bell, and I should note before I have you explain that, uh, each crew names themselves. They have named themselves the six taking up space as each one is ringing a bell. And the significance of that is what, Ariane? They, this is one of our traditions. All uh, astronauts throughout history in various programs have had their traditions. For us, we always want our astronauts to ring the bell above there. You see, light this candle. Those were the last words that uh, Alan Shepard said right before uh, he went to space. Alan Shepard, of course, the namesake of our vehicle. Uh, he was the first American into suborbital space. Five, four, command engine start. Two, one, ignition. New Shepard has cleared the tower. is supersonic. Engine back up to full throttle. Supersonic. We have passed through max Q. Maximum pressure dynamic pressure. That's when the vehicle, the stresses between the atmosphere Passing and the speed are at the maximum. So to punch through that is so important. You see the BE3 engines is firing beautifully. You see the, the, the stream of steam behind it. Those ladies right now are having an incredible view on their way to space. Passing through 80,000 feet, 1,300 miles per hour. Feet. You're going to peak at about 2,300 miles an hour over Mach 3, three times the speed of sound. Shortly coming up. We'll have Miko main engine cut off. We will turn off the engine, but the two craft, the capsule and the booster, will continue their ascent Stand to space. Stand by, Miko. Stand by, Miko. <laughs> and our... And there you, there you saw the main engine is turned off. We're now going to separate the capsule from the booster. And at that point, Kristen, that's when all six astronauts are going to start to feel the weightlessness. And shortly thereafter, we're going to let them unbuckle. And that right there is the most critical milestone of this whole ascent. Oprah watching her best friend go to space. And the two craft is separated. <laughs> 328,000 feet, 100 kilometers. Welcome to space, ladies, or shall I say, astronauts. Oh, look at the moon. You guys, I will have to tell you, look at the moon. Look. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, that's our pink moon. And just oh in case God. it wasn't clear, those are the astronauts. Those are their voices that you're hearing. 
And there, they have hit Apogee, the highest point in flight, well over 345,000 feet, well over the common line. And at this moment, the astronauts have unstrapped from their seats. They are floating. They are weightless. They are experiencing zero G for the very first time in their lives. And Katy Perry did say that she was going to sing in space. I'm waiting for it. Waiting for it. One minute warning. One minute warning. There comes the rocket down. It's going to relight its engine. We're going to also see a sonic boom. We're going to hear that shortly here. And remember, this is something that had never been done before until just a few years ago. Truly the stuff of science fiction that you're about to watch in just seconds. Drag Here we race. go. Woo! Booster touchdown, welcome home, New Shepard. Picture perfect landing right Picture there. Picture perfect landing. Right on target. You see that dust kind of creates this dramatic cloud that gets re that reveals the beautiful rocket that has just taken these ladies up to space and back. And I love the echo across the mountains. Is that what I was hearing there? That's, That's what nice you were hearing. You hear the, you heard the sonic boom, then you heard the engine relight, and all of that reverberates in this big, beautiful valley in West Texas. We're waiting to see the drogue parachutes deploy from the crew capsule. Those are like the guide parachutes. There go, the drogue parachutes. Just free falling right there until those drogues came out. And then next will be the main parachutes that get pulled out. <laughs> Hear that screaming inside the capsule? And all three parachutes reefing and they will slowly inflate. Slowing the capsule to a nice smooth 10, 15 miles an hour. They are cruising back home. Three good parachutes. And you will see a puff of smoke when it touches down. A puff of dust. That should be, yes. That's normal. A puff of dust, last milliseconds. Air, air cushion that will kick up the dust. It's a very soft, soft landing despite the sporty uh, perception. There it is. Congratulations, and welcome back to Earth. Here we go. Yeah. Here goes Jeff Bezos to open the hatch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she didn't really close it again. Come on out, guys.
I don't think you can describe it um, because, you know, what I was saying, it was like um, quiet, but then also really alive. And you look at it and you're like, we're all in this together. Like, that's all I could think about is like, we're so connected, more connected than than you you realize because you just see right here, you see like, you know, states and all these things things that like divide us but we're not you know, i uh i usually have nice words to say but in this moment i just want all survivors to know that you can heal no dream is too wild um and that if it's so wild out there like going to space you can absolutely make it through and it can absolutely be possible i have almost no words um it was the most incredible experience of my life to be up there and see like the such vast darkness in space and look down on our planet the moon was so beautiful and that was like i felt like that was a special gift just for me i can't even believe what i saw when somebody calls this a ride this was not a ride this was, what happened to us was not a ride this was a bona fide freaking flight it's oddly quiet when you get up there it's really quiet and peaceful and you look down at the planet and you think that's where we came from and it I, to me it's such a reminder about how we need to do better be better do better be better human beings it's and what do you mean by that processing well it's so nasty and so vitriolic nowadays and i mean if everybody could experience that peace that we had up there and the kindness and what it takes to do what we did all the people that it took to get us up there and get us back safely, I'll never, ever, ever forget. I will never be the same. I mean, when you get up there and you see the earth and it's so beautiful and it just fills the screen and it's not just your window, it's like everybody's window and there's no boundaries, there's no border, there's just earth. Wow. It's incredible. You know, Gail is so honest that this wasn't her dream, but it, this was a dream of yours. How do you feel now that you just achieved it? Like I picked the right dream. <laughs> and when we landed, I said, Exuma, I'm good blue calm, but I'm ready to go back. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. I feel super connected to love. So connected to love. I think this experience has shown me you never know how much love is inside of you, like how much love you have to give mm -hmm. and how loved you are until the day you launch. It's not about me. It's not about singing my songs. It's about a collective energy in there. It's about us. It's about making space for future women and taking up space and belonging. And it's about this wonderful world that we see right out there and appreciating it. This is all for the benefit of Earth.